So this is our Mount Sinai Hospital live case number one of MedStream 360. 68 year old patient who presented with dyspnea and angina. He has a history of PCI to the LED and circumflex and has been progressing aortic stenosis and uh, various risk factors. He did have small CVA, COPD, and uh, basically echo showed severe AS with a high gradient, anything more than uh, uh, 40, 45, and velocity more than four, we call it a high, not severe only, but high, and with a value of 0.6. So he came as a part of tower worker, but not ready for it yet. An idea there was that if there is a coronary artery disease, will do a PCI and BAV and bring the patient back for the tower procedure later. So what happened is he's done good medical therapy and he had a cath done yesterday which revealed calcific two vessel disease and uh, uh, just uh, Anu will going to show that uh, one of the vessel has been taken care of the LED and now we are going to take care of the RCA. So let's see this now first. So this is the left uh, system angiogram left main you see that is uh, non-obstructive you have a ramus, OM, circumflex essentially looks okay. So yesterday he had rotational atherectomy uh, no. plus uh, a stent of the LED which is okay. You do see a small vessel that is uh, way further down that is uh, the subtotal to total AV continuation which is a uh, small to moderate size. This is the right coronary artery and this is a dry cine. Looks like there is a stent, a, a tram track uh, calcium Prox mid distal RCA. This is one way of knowing that this is a heavy calcium if there's no uh, imaging in the lab. So this is the kind of case. Point out the when you, see, well also. Uh, you can also do just uh, some kind of atherectomy is definitely required. And what kind of atherectomy to be needed, we will discuss. Now, if you see here, uh, even in this uh, film, uh, since you had BAV, uh, you do see some movements of the uh, leaflets, which means he'll be okay for another uh, few weeks before we consider this patient needs tower. So that was angiogram with the dye, prox LED, uh, sorry, prox RCA, mid RCA, and more important is just at the uh, you know acute marginal area. That is where it is uh, have, you know significant calcific significant lesion. And of course, you will see uh, the rest of the vessel is non-obstructive, but the AV continuation, uh, so RPL, that is uh, what we said was subtotal, and we are not going to take care of that uh, vessel at this time. Now, question comes, uh, play it again, please. Uh, that could it be just that significant lesion of the RCA and making that AV continuation of that RPL slow filling and with the collateral, or truly there is a, a, looks like there is additional lesion in that um, LPL, but that's a big. Uh, uh, RPL, big RPL, or could it be just because of the very tight lesion? So we, since many of these patients do not have a functional test, and this is still being debated, that the elderly patients, when they show it to you or during time of uh, tower, do you just go with the angiogram and do the intervention or do a physiological testing? As we know, this whole concept of CAD and uh, valve replacement is under like quite uh, intense investigation with a, a complete uh, tower trial ongoing to do a PCI or not PCI after successful CAPN deployment. So in this particular case, since he had no other study and he's a young, relatively young person, I think an 85 year old, you probably don't need a functional, we did a IFR, in aortic patients, because I want to avoid giving adenosine, we did IFR of both LED and RCA, which was positive. Uh, actually, RCA was much more significant, was 0.72. Normal, we know, is 0.89 above, and uh, LED was 0.82. So we took care of the LED yesterday, and in preparation for today's med stream, I thought this will be a great, uh, interesting and teaching case, uh, that right coronary with multiple steps using the atherectomy, then IVL, kind of rotor tripsy uh, to take it through. So I will leave it now. I'll be on the backside and I request people that please ans uh, log on and ask questions while the case is being done uh, by uh, Dr. Keeney and Dr. Huda. Now, um, the, that's an interesting question that, uh, you know, why CAD need to be taken care? I think we are, uh, even before this trial is ongoing and questions will be answered, uh, based on our own, you know, past knowledge, we used to say anything above uh, 
80-90% uh, need to be intervened before tower since we are going to be doing uh, uh, heavy pacing hypotension during tower and there's a you know, rare chance that this kind of vessels could uh, occlude at that time. So remember if the lesion is more than 20 millimeter, those are the criteria of uh, adverse uh, uh, for the rotai score. Uh, this is a, about 10-12 millimeter lesion and we can ask our IVAS expert what is the length of it. But Region, but circular calcium is 350 plus degree calcium. I think using a bar and a 3.5 balloon, uh, 20 millimeter, although you have to take care of the proximal segment also, proximal is about 60%. And then in this particular case, uh, knowing it's a large vessel, what is the vessel size? 4.5 or 5? Yeah, actually 5.0. 5 yep. Yeah. It's a large vessel. So knowing that the, our attract me whether it's the orbital or rotational question is in this case you can do orbital also so any one of them we try to avoid orbital in a tortuous segment and aorto osteal lesions otherwise both can be interchangeable and in this case we'll combine it with uh, IVL okay. because large vessel heavy calcium circular look at this full circle calcium yeah. uh, why they're not showing it they should do this uh, I was please Full circle, yeah, look yeah. at this, full and circle it's, calcium. It's and she has an irregular yeah. surface, no, like how far now they balloon. protruding okay. inside. No, 3520. Yeah. Now, yeah, so, uh, the uh, question is, uh, Amit, you have anything to add? Uh, yeah, Dr. Sharma, uh, I think it would be interesting to know, like, do you always use pacer in this RC atherectomies or like, is there a subset where you like avoid using a pacer? So that's a very good point. So use of pacer, so we talked about the guide catheter. Then uh, the second important six French guide, AL, is good for good support, AL.75. Then PACER is that it will cause bradycardia asystole. So therefore, either in cases where you cannot put a pacemaker, like many times when we are doing a radial, uh, then we give replace it. We did the trial back in 90s called BARD, B-A-R-D. And basically, we should replace the pacemaker with aminophilin 300 milligram and 1 milligram atropine. And that worked in 90% of cases. It's still about 10% require uh, urgent pacemaker. So key is in this case, if I'm doing radial, I think you can avoid it, give aminophilin and still have trouble, then you puncture the femoral vein. Yeah. So okay. um, he's going to show the uh, three steps. Yeah. So first one is here, the yeah. knob. I'm going backward, forward. So any tension between the Teflon sheet and the bar is gone. Second yeah. step, between the Y connector and the wire, any tension is gone. And the third on Dyna, we are going to press. See, yeah. it just did not move. So all the tension has been removed. Uh, Maybe you can repeat it to the audience. You repeat those three steps again because they are, and why are you worried about those three steps, uh, Anu? Yeah, so uh, the whole system has uh, uh, three things. One is a wire, second is a Teflon sheet, the Teflon sheet, uh, we have it, is a protection for the burr and also for this rota flush to go through it and then the rota burr. So you have three things. So when we are going inside, there is always a tension between the three things. And if we do not take the tension and we start burring, there's a risk at 150, 160 RPM, the burr can go forward or usually we use our jump, which can cause a tremendous dissection. So are subsequently slow flow, but very rare, but uh, catastrophic complication is a perforation. So we want to avoid that. So by doing, uh, we need to remove the tension. So this is what we did. So the, bar, uh, the knob moving backward forward, Teflon sheet and the burr tension is gone. Y connector here moving backward forward is the burr and the wire is gone. And just to be sure we did a good, we took care of the tension on Dyna, you do the testing. And Dyna, we know, is just between 65 to 70,000 RPM. So any movement that happens, happens at a lower speed. So you will not have any issue inside the vessel. The next important question is, why did we select rotational atherectomy? Why not we go with direct uh, yeah, IVL or why not orbital atherectomy? Uh, yeah, so I mean, again, uh, so this is like those, uh, uh, there are the paper by, uh, uh, you know, in uh, Jack Asia, that all the majority of the calcific lesion can be taken care of by IVL. And I think the stat statement they made is reasonable, we can do. Only question is, as you know, that you require pre-dilatation, which was done in the disrupt CAD, which is selected cases, and about 55% of cases. And remember, the criteria of the disrupt CAD was 
that patient does not, you think patient does not need rotation atherectomy. But if you think patient need rotational atherectomy, then patients or atherectomy actually they have, I mean lay orbital or rotational, they were not included. So if you think it's a long lesion, you think a very tight lesion, you will need a atherectomy, rotational atherectomy or orbital, they were not included in the, in the uh, IVL trials. Not to say you can do a balloon dilatation of any lesion and get through it. But I think in this kind of tight case where your IVAS has a trouble, although went through, yeah. so you need to make a room for the IVL. So I would say that what rotational atherectomy is doing is basically giving you the path to put the IVL, which could be the, you can call it a final frontier. And secondly, that it will decrease the complication by using a smaller bar rather than going to a bigger one. Okay, that when you're doing rotational atherectomy, the steps are very, very important. So one, we make sure there is uh, no tension in the bar. The second is how you do it, okay? So you're going to show them so uh, pecking motion so essentially you have a lesion you peck so you go keep going forward with the rota bar so you will do the pecking motion you will watch the speed the tech is going to tell you the speed and then at 20 seconds we stop okay yeah. so that, uh, that's the way we have uh, done it when, uh, from the very beginning i think uh, that's how i think dr sharma was involved when the rota came into existence in the 19 uh, Early 94, 90s. 94, yeah. 94. yeah. That's, that's how like uh, Dr. Kinney and Dr. Sharma explained, you avoid slow flow being happening in these large vessels, which can lead to a lot of uh, issues later on. You so start now. speed, uh, sizing, and every, uh, like looking at the hemodynamics is of okay, utmost good. importance. So we are starting burring yeah. and then uh, uh, Asif is going to tell me, okay, the numbers, go. So everybody watch his uh, hands. Slow packing motion, and uh, you are watching the screen also. Take the guide so out. Go. Hmm? Guide is too far in. Yeah. Okay, stop. SS, I think we are okay there because that part is uh, no. Yeah. Okay, keep going. So the now lead. what happens is we already have done probably about 15 uh, millimeter, 20 millimeter. So. When he's starting, he's going to go all the way just at that spot and take care of the rest of the lesion. Good. Yes. So we know the tightest part is at that uh, acute angle. Yeah. Okay, pull back and wait. Yeah. So now uh, you see, we didn't come all the way back. Um, so we are just where we stop. So we know why this also important is you are giving a breathing, a room for the vessel, a little bit of forward flow. Yeah, keep going. And that's a very important point. If I, somebody asked me, what is the Achilles heel of rotation attract me? And that is the generation of heat. And I think the heat is the troublesome. Let's put an echo now. I mean, I was... Can I start way back? This is just before the distal RC verification. It's coming. Yeah, lumen is open. Yeah, here's a good landing zone. Like 5 0 vessel. It's coming back. Yeah, here's a distal region. And once open. And now coming the tightest wow. part. It has created a nice. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Got this was the parts. tightest first nodule. Yeah, we have laid it. It's a tandem lesion. Once open. I think the goal for us is having done this many imaging and so so, so many calcific uh, yep. that we yep. should use. There's also the, I see the ablated calcite plaque. Deep learning to understand and uh, have an algorithm. There's also the nodule. Right? So, that's a very important point. Let's go. How will you go for the bigger speed? When... Uh, this was a short lesion. Suppose you have a long lesion. I'm talking 20, 30 millimeter lesion. So you have done maybe half of the lesion. And then there's a certain point where you think you still cannot, Megatron. the bar is still not making yeah. movements further. This is the time you decide that do I go high speed of the same bar or do I downsize the bar? So you've done already I would say half the lesion of a long lesion. 
you are hitting lot of resistance means that there's a, that's the time you can decide i would go uh, bigger size bar but oh, normal teaching is that if you think you have 1.5 bar and it still did not do the job you did not uh, able uh, you are not able to ablate the entire length we always go say downsize so you will go downsize the bar and when you go downsize and you still not able to finish the ablation then you go higher speed now what's a higher speed we have 150 160 we would say go 170 very rarely with the you know operators who have had a lot of experience we can go higher than that but you definitely need a lot of experience before you think you really want to go very high sp uh, uh, speed well, i mean the like. other point could be also mm. i know that uh, the support the clearly we know if it's a more complex case we have one of our uh, guy who does 95% uh, uh, radials so patients who need extra support you definitely pull back 2 mm yeah, yeah. Sure. so you probably need you get better to go by femoral and the seven french mm. other is mm. you are putting a two stand technique mm. seven french will be better in that situation mm. so that probably femoral because you, you will know, have a know, lower what i meant is assess they will argue do dk crush with six french yeah. so you know they will have their own argument but uh, the same thing you want to finish the case in 10 minutes or you want to do 45 minutes hour of the same you case put back to millimeter yeah. ready good. Good. very good massage distal yeah. later yeah yes. good this distal may look yeah. okay gop so the, that that is a uh, very important gop and um many times we have seen it especially when you are doing a circumflex uh, intervention by the radial yeah. the more. guide always is deep down uh, we have seen guide cause proximal uh, rca di dissection guide cause proximal circumflex dissection or no support and there's no way you are able to deliver the strength and most cases you end up using stability of the guide by wiring in the led or using a godzilla guide liner this is very common so very good question uh, dr diego padilla asking the question that of the various things which you are doing in this case what is the most defined step in this case and how we should approach it so i would say i'll wait uh, uh, dr kini to answer but from my point of view your calcium at 7 o'clock position was the biggest trouble so one rotation attract me of the 1.5 or 1.75 bar is the most defined step in this particular case anu you want to answer that question yeah the, the i mean the, the, deciding atherectomy now whether you wanted to do orbital or rota uh, was your choice but you see that without imaging we decided just on fluoroscopy tram track calcium equal to atherectomy so you do atherectomy and then you know additional imaging can help you how to better guide you but th 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 that was a very important point uh, so okay give the ivs ready nice yep beautiful okay while you are finishing the ivs the last question which we did answer uh, at sinai because of our complexities and select the referral we do of 330 40 40 cases of pci we do every month rota i mean atherect me done in about 80 patients so around 25% so all the 25% if you make it 100% uh, rotation track me 80% orbital is 15 and remaining is uh, laser uh, laser in uncrossable lesion or undilated unexpanded stents then we combine of these atherectomy techniques almost 40% of the time with ivl on top of it 40 to 50% so ivl use of in our lab is about 30 per month so that's where, where we are We're, could we use more orbital lot of centers use solely orbital nothing wrong in that and most important the major trial eclipse mm. but the 2 2000 patient has completed the enrollment few okay. weeks ago and we'll know by uh, in next year tct or so the final result were compared I orbital guess? versus high pressure for before stenting i was on the screen please i was on the screen samir mehta cannot put any comment he's not watching we don't need it's so many good comments He should not be putting. We don't want him. Very good questions. Looking good. Okay. Remember, we said the distal area of the stent. Uh, this is exactly yeah, where we are. Back. Angiographically, we wanted Sorry, to leave it alone. The distal edge looks great. Very expanded. No edge dissection. And the stent is very expanded. 
This was the tightest spot, but well expanded. Good lumen. Coming to the plug mm. cells here. Nodulases. Yeah, here is a yeah elliptical shape, but lumen is good. 